you know, we, we are looking at basically the same basic ideals. All right? uh, so that, I think, uh, should be the priority. So to propel this nation further towards economic progress, the agenda will obviously be large, but the necessary condition must be, to me at least, and to many in this room, governmental and political stability. I think it, that if at all there is any correlation, this is the correlation. Yeah? Uh, that's why I see Malaysia is interesting. You know, well, we won't get the governmental and political stability if politicians continue to be preoccupied with rocking the stability of this nation as part of a continuing attempt to assume power by every political means at their disposal. That will be a sad day for this nation. So given the current scenario, to my mind, some may not agree, I think the reforms of certain so-called repressive laws um, should best be studied further. Maybe this is not the correct time yet, yeah? uh, because of the political scenario, the interesting political scenario in, in, in Malaysia. I, I'm not saying that these reforms are not important. Of course they are. But sometimes one needs to tread carefully in the context of present-day challenges. What, what are the, the, these areas? One of the favorite targets is the law on sedition. Yeah? Uh, people argue uh, New Zealand doesn't have a law on sedition, they've abolished it, uh, UK doesn't have a law on sedition, so we must do away with our, our law on sedition. I used to be one of those who felt the Sedition Act should be repealed and perhaps replaced by national harmony legislation. Yeah? National harmony and sedition are poles apart. <laughs> um, but recent developments have convinced me otherwise, at least for the time being. Yeah? Now is not the right time. There is still a need for, for us to, to have uh, the law on sedition. Because attempts to cause disaffection against a government lawfully established to cause affection, or to challenge the position of the young Dibitan Agung and the, uh, the rulers, and all attempts to cause disharmony among the races in Malaysia, I believe should be rigorous, rigorously resisted and punished accordingly. accordingly. No two ways about it. You, know? you want stability, you cannot give the full extent of the freedoms. You cannot simply you know, repeal a law that might be a saviour in certain situations. So, so that I think we, we have to look at it carefully. The other law which uh, has surfaced every now and then um, is SOSMA, Security Offences Special Measures Act. Some people say that too should be repealed. I mean, we're a developing nation, we want to be progressive. That has to go too. I still believe yeah, contrary to my earlier position, uh, we should still maintain it, at least for the time being. But, but safeguards must be put in place to ensure basic human rights and the dignity of those arrested and or charged are respected. That is the important thing. Uh, no matter how the law is structured, you know, make sure that human dignity is respected and the basic human rights are respected too. Um, for instance, so I think we should be looking at it and uh, have the law change accordingly to make sure that when people are detained or arrested, at least the families should know where they are and they should not be placed in you know, all kinds of places which do not accord the dignity of uh, the human being in those situations. Um, but that's just one thing. But to say that it should be abolished altogether, uh, I personally don't believe that uh, the time is right. The other often or oft-criticized law is, of course, the notorious Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998. That's another area I think we should be looking at when we're doing reforms. Um, that criminalizes 
the use of network facilities or network services by a person to transmit any communication that is deemed offensive and could cause annoyance to another. I think it can be tweaked a bit, uh, so that it, but, but, but it remains necessary to have laws uh, of this nature, given the abundance of fake news, uh, half-truth, uh, misrepresentations over the social media currently. Things have changed. You, you know, every day you click on your TikTok account and you will see a torrent of fake news, a torrent of misrepresentations and many other things which shouldn't be mentioned. So I think we need such laws. Uh, unfortunately, we had one, but uh, <laughs> the Pakatan Harapan government repealed it after some bit of difficulty. Uh, I think now, now is the time maybe to think along the lines of having some kind of anti-fake news legislation. It is necessary because conditions then and conditions now have uh, you know, changed dramatically. Uh, technology has its upside, but uh, in the political sphere it has a tremendous downside. Uh, particularly in uh, nations such as ours, such as Malaysia, where views can be grounded on race, religion, regionalism, and so on and so forth. We can't allow a free-for-all situation, so these laws are still needed. So, what is my point? My point is, I believe sometimes the wholesale emphasis on reform of so-called repressive laws as a priority can be misplaced. We should be seriously considering the reform of outdated law, or outdated laws, actually, instead of repressive laws um, in the areas of business and commerce and replace them with more modern and progressive acts. That is better than focusing our attention on this other legislation. That can come later. But for now, let's polish up our act in the commercial and business areas. You know, I'm not saying there shouldn't be any reform at all on these repressive laws. I'm saying time, circumstance. But even so, some laws have to be tweaked. I did mention you know, having respect to human rights, basic human rights and dignity of the individual for those who are detained uh, in communicado and things like that. Um, still need to do it. And uh, sometimes you don't need legislative change. Maybe the judiciary might uh, come into the fore and decide what is just. So that's why judiciary is so important. Um, so the short answer is yes, we have to change eventually, but don't repeal. Don't repeal the entire act now without replacing it with something else because we need to have political stability. And this ties in with uh, what uh, Wabi Minister was saying just now. To maintain that two-thirds majority, it's not easy. You need political stability. Uh, we cannot afford to have people running amok, you know, state saying all kinds of things. Even as we speak, there are so many. Very alarming, you know, very alarming. So there must be laws to ban uh, all this. So when the country becomes stable, yeah, then it will be a good time for us to commit ourselves to, to all this in the full gamut of international freedoms. But I did say you know, that uh, we are actually not doing too badly you know, on the freedoms front. And our courts have been very uh, astute in this. There have been so many cases no, on, on the point, you know, I, I myself decided uh, on the freedom of assembly case. Remember, Nick Nazmi. So we, we declared the act unconstitutional. Of course, some people disagree in government what we did, but it has stood the test of time. You know, so things like that. So you rely on not only legislative changes, but also think of what the judiciary can da can do. But uh, we have to give the judiciary our support. Even the judiciary has been criticized now. Yeah? 
So many things are happening you know, uh, below the radar. So it's quite alarming. That's why I say, keep what we have now. Uh, amend whatever little we can, but don't throw everything out you know, uh, together with the kitchen sink. And then we regret later on. We must learn a valuable lesson uh, from the episode with the international conventions. It was good, you know, but timing was not right, so people made full use of it. Um, anyway. <laughs>